recording this video to give you some practice on the material that's going to be in the, mark, in the, in the real test. So it's a mock test where we have to learn the basics of molarity, um, detecting uh, combustion analysis, how to find the empirical formula based on the data, on the percent composition data, and how to find the formula based on the, uh, again, percent composition data. So in the first question, we're asked to find the molar mass of aluminum sulfide. Aluminum sulfide is composed of aluminum with a, plus, a charge of plus three, and a sulfide, which is a charge of minus two. When you combine them, one of the tricks they recommend is you do a crisscross, so the two aluminums and uh, three sulfur atoms will, will create a, an ionic substance that has uh, no charges. So aluminum sulfide is Al2S3 to find its molar mass. Two times the molar mass of aluminum, three times the mass of sulfur gives you a total of 150.1608. Uh, you're only allowed five significant figures because sulfur is um, reported to only five significant figures of accuracy. So the final answer has to be 150.16. All these red arrows um, point out what I'm looking for when I correct this particular problem. So I'm looking for the aluminum with two, the sulfur with three, that there's two times the molar mass of aluminum, that there be three times the mass of sulfur, and that the total is 150.161, and then that you report it for the correct number of significant figures. So number 1A is eight marks. <clears throat> the second question is to find the percent composition, the percent oxygen in, uh, in chromium nitrate. Now, chromium nitrate uh, sorry, it's chromic nitrate, so chromic has a plus three charge, nitrate is minus one, so you need to bracket the nitrate and put a three around it because that's, going, that's what's going to give it a charge balance. So the chromium weighs 51.996, the uh, nitrogen weighs 14.0067, there's three nitrogens, that three signifies that there's three nitrates. So that means three nitrogens and three times three oxygens, or nine oxygens times the molar mass of oxygen, uh, oxygen which is 15.394. Total mass is 238.0107. You're um, not going to round it off yet because we're not finished the calculation. Percent oxygen is nine times the molar mass of oxygen divided the molar mass of the whole substance times 100. It gives you a value of 60.4992129. Based on the significant figures that we have here, we're only allowed to report the value, the most accurate number we can report it to is five significant figures because chromium is only, uh, chromium is only reported to five significant figures. So it's 60.499% oxygen. Uh, this is, uh, in this question, we're asked to find out the percent composition, uh, the percent platinum in a drug called cisplatin, which is used to treat cancer. An anti-cancer drug, it binds to the DNA and it, um, I guess it causes the polymerase enzyme to, to trip or skip or uh, damage the translation so it ends up killing the cell in the long run. Uh, so we have the molar mass of platinum, two times the molar mass of chlorine, twice the molar mass of nitrogen, six times the mass of hydrogen. You'll notice that the two outside of the bracket signifies that you get two nitrogens and six hydrogens because it's two and it's three groups. The molar mass of cisplatin is 300.04644. Percent platinum is 195.08 divided by the molar mass of the entire compound times 100. So it's 65.017% platinum. In question D, we're asked to find how much, uh, how many grams of barium iodide are found in as 1.906 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of barium iodide. So we first find the molar mass of barium iodide, which is listed here. It's 391 grams per mole. Remember to put a 2 next to iodine. I think I gave the formula in the question as well. Yeah, it's already given. Anyway, barium is plus 2 iodine. It, iodine is minus 1, so you need 2 iodines to combine it to barium. Molar mass is 137 for the barium. 2 times 126 for the iodine, times the number of moles. You see how the units here give it away. The molar mass is grams per mole, and the number of moles is, is here. So moles cancel, your answer will have to be in grams. And that's what we're looking for, the number of grams in 1.906 times 10 to the minus 2 
morals of Barry Maidak. So it, you're only allowed four significant figures. So um, it's 7.455 that we reported to. That's where we get the number of significant figures. There, there are only four significant figures in the question. So that's the highest level of accuracy we can, we can report it to. Uh, I would look for, you see where all the red hours are. So this question is at a seven. <coughs> Notice I always attribute one mark for significant figures. You will need to learn that in university. You might as well start now. The second question asks to you to determine the empirical formula of a substance with 62.1% carbon, 5.21% hydrogen, 12.1% nitrogen, and 20.7% oxygen. So the first step is to assume that we have 100 grams of the substance which is what we do, and that converts all the percentages into gram amounts, 62.1 grams of carbon, et cetera, and divide by the molar mass of each substance, and it gives you these mole ratios. Now we take the smallest number in the group, which is 0.86, and divide all of them by that 0.86, and it gives you 6, 6, 1, and 1.5. Almost all of them are integer values. The only one that's not an integer is, one, is a 1.5 here, representing the number of moles of oxygen. And since you cannot obviously cannot have 1.5 molecules within a mo uh, 1.5 atoms within a molecule it makes sense to double the values so that you get 12 12 2 and 3 so the empirical formula of this substance would be carbon 12 um, C12 H12 N2O3 i gave a mark for each one of these steps and because there's four of them you get 12 marks just for getting this right so you never give up in the question always write anything that you can write that makes any sense at all, and I'll give you part marks for it. Um, you'll notice the answer is only worth one mark. So the process is what I'm looking for. I'm looking to, to see that you understand what you're doing. In part B of number two, the question is, what is the empirical and molecular formula of styrene, which contains 92.3% carbon and 7.7% hydrogen, and has a molar mass of 104 grams per mole? 92.3 grams of carbon, 7.7 .7 grams of hydrogen, uh, divided by the molar mass of carbon, divided by the molar mass of hydrogen. Here's the mole ratios you get. You see they're almost similar. When I divide by the lower number, which is this one, they're both very close to 1. So we're told, that as a result, we realize that the empirical formula is C1H1. When we calculate the empirical formula weight, we get that 12 plus 1 gives you 13, but the molar mass, we're told, is 104. So when you divide the formula weight by the empirical formula weight, you get a number very close to 8, which within experimental error should uh, indicate to us that it is in fact 8. So 8 times the empirical formula will give you C8H8. And as it turns out, this is the formula for styrene. It's a benzene ring attached to a um, ethyl. And you see that it has 8 hydrogens and uh, 8 carbons. Third question asks, <clears throat> the fermentation of glucose, C6H12O6, produces ethyl alcohol, C2H5OH, and carbon dioxide. A asks, how many moles of carbon dioxide are produced when 0.4 moles of glucose reacts? So 0.4 moles of glucose uh, reacts to form how many moles of carbon dioxide? Well, the stoichiometry is one. Two. So for every one mole of glucose, you're going to get two moles of CO2. But we have 0.4 moles of glucose multiplied by two, you get 0.8 moles of CO2. That's worth four marks. In question B, they're asked, how many grams of glucose are needed to form 7.5 grams of ethyl alcohol? Grams of al ethyl alcohol, um, two times 12 for the mass of the carbon, six times one for the mass of the hydrogen, 15.99 or for the mass of the oxygen, that tells us how many moles of ethanol we have. Then, multiply by the stoichiometry, which is one to two. For every one mole of glucose that you uh, react, you get two moles of ethanol. And that tells you how many moles of glucose was reacted. And then you multiply by the molar mass of glucose, which is 180 grams, roughly, to give you that uh, you'll get 14.657 grams, put it to three significant figures because the question only has three significant figures in it. So your final answer is 14.7 grams of glucose is needed to generate 7.5 grams of ethanol according to this stoichiometry. The last 
part of this question, how many grams of CO2 form when 7.5 grams of ethanol are produced? So now, uh, again, say 7.5 grams of ethanol, but now how much CO2 is produced? Uh, same number of moles, that's why I scribbled it here, because it's the same number, it gives you the same number of moles of ethanol, but now the stoichiometry is 2 to 2. For every 2 moles of CO2 that appear, 2 moles of ethanol as well will have been uh, produced by this reaction. That will result in the, um, the multiplied by the molar mass of CO2, 7.164 grams of CO2. You're only allowed to report it for three significant figures, so final answer 7.16 grams of CO2 is generated. All these questions, by the way, come from chapter 3 of uh, Brown, our textbook, 10th edition. We'll continue on the next one. The last question, question four, asks, lithium reacts with nitrogen to form lithium nitride. So we see the down chemical equation. Six lithium atoms combined with two, uh, with one nitrogen molecule, which is N2, is diatomic, to form two molecules of lithium nitride, Li3N, is the formula for lithium nitride. So we're told there's five if 5 grams of each reactant undergoes a reaction with an 88.5% 88, 88 yield, how many grams of lithium nitride are obtained from the reaction? So 5 grams of lithium divided by the molar mass of lithium gives you 0.72 moles of lithium. 5 grams of nitrogen divided by the molar mass of nitrogen gives you 0.17 moles of nitrogen. Now it looks like you have an excess of lithium, and you, you have more lithium than you do nitrogen, but the stoichiometry is 6 to 1. So in fact, if you have 0.2 moles of nitrogen, you're going to need um, 1.2 moles of lithium. And uh, in fact, the lithium is the limiting reagent. We see that uh, 0.17 times 6 exceeds this number. I didn't actually calculate it, but it does. So this is the actual uh, limiting reagent. So we start our calculation from the limiting reagent. We have to find out the limit theoretical yield, we start with the limiting reagent, which is lithium, 0.72 moles of lithium, times the stoichiometry for the production of, of lithium nitride. Six moles of lithium will result in the formation of two moles of lithium nitride. So it's two to six uh, stoichiometry. How do I choose which one of these two to put? Do I put it two over six or six over two? I'm trying to eliminate moles of lithium. So moles of lithium has to appear in the denominator, denominator so that I can cancel them. And we get that we're going to form 0.24 moles of lithium nitride. We multiply by the molar mass of lithium nitride, which includes uh, three times the mass of lithium, one times the, math of, uh, one times the mass of uh, nitrogen. We get that it produces 8.36 grams of lithium nitride. We also re recall that you're only allowed to report it for three significant figures of accuracy, so that's the final answer. Now the actual yield it tells us is 88.5% of the theoretical yield. So 0 .85, 0 0.885 times 8.36 gives us 7.401. So in actual fact, we should expect to get 7.4 grams of lithium nitride from this reaction.